Hi there. This is a continuation of my report on the recent podcast interview between George R. R. Martin and new showrunner on House of the Dragon, Ryan Condal. Well, recent, it was the last week of September, but there's been so many spy reports from filming in Spain that there's a big backlog. I'm just getting to this now. And, when, and then I got sick. So I'm splitting this into multiple videos. I, this isn't the first one that I explained. They touched on so many points that if I made one big two-hour report on it, breaking it down, it would get, stuff would get lost in the shovel. So I broke it down into three or four different videos, each focused on a specific point that they raised. So previous ones were their work relationship, uh, how Condal ultimately got hired to do this, or the filming schedule that seems to be taking shape that Condal discussed. In this one, I want to focus on a key point that Martin himself raised in it, which was actually a mystery to us for quite some time, for about four years now. The identity of the first two prequel pitches that he put forward to HBO. That in previous interviews he said, well, the first one was, I said, Dance of the Dragons. But there was this other one that HBO itself rejected out of hand. This is like back in 2016. Then they had the War of the Five Pitches, summer 2017, where they said we hired five different screenwriters to each put forward a pitch. And then for the next two years through October 2019, we were following the multiple pitches that they had put forward and trying to guess what they might be because it was sort of a sign that HBO wasn't honest with us that they kept it a secret what these ideas even were. And there must be baggage behind that. This is the old HBO under Richard Plepler versus in the AT&T and now Discovery era. When they put forward new prequel pitches, the second wave of prequel pitches in spring 2021, they openly said what they were. And some of them even got canceled, but that they weren't honest with us about what exactly are you planning with these five. That's a whole separate discussion. I'll summarize that in a minute. But that Martin said, well, these are the two top picks that I had. One of them went forward to be one of the five pitches and ultimately turned out to be House of the Dragon, the Dance of the Dragons show. But the other one was a mystery to us. Like, HBO rejected it out of hand. What was this sixth idea? And surprisingly, in this podcast, Martin confirmed that the second idea that he put forward of the first two ideas was the Tales of Duncan Egg, which he has famously said he never wanted to see adapted at the moment because he's not done with the series of prequel novellas about it. That he's published three out of twelve, and the fourth and fifth one are nearly done, but he put them on pause to focus on the main novels, as he should, and he has an outline for the second half of it that he put forward in the World of Ice and Fire back in 2014. He knows what's going to happen, he's mapped it out. But still that he's insisted so much that back when they started doing this in 2017, the one thing he admitted was, of these five ideas, none of them is Tales of Duncan Egg. In fact, I don't want them to make a Duncan Egg adaptation until I'm done with it. Maybe that was just a dig at Game of Thrones for going off book, and they felt they were free to go off book because they weren't done, even though Martin told them outlines of the future books. For that matter, they went off book in season five. The fourth and fifth books they felt free to ignore because the series wasn't finished. The unknown of maybe it'll do something versus if this was a finished series, they would not have been able to get away with that as much as they did. There was always that false promise of maybe they're going somewhere with this. But it is not a matter of, oh, Martin didn't finish the books. It's remember when we were upset about the Sansa rape and TV Dorn and butchering Stannis? All of that is from finished books. So he just, you know, Martin's too polite about this, and maybe he has an NDA or something restricting what he can say in public, but just, he said, I've seen what happens when they try to adapt a project that isn't finished yet. Let's wait on that. And it turns out he himself had suggested Tales of Duncan Egg. In like 2016, this is before the Five Pitches era. This is the first two ideas he voluntarily submitted to them. And this is really important on a scale of like the next decade in terms of the ongoing Westeros cinematic universe. This is Martin giving his blessing that 
in his mind, these are the two prequel eras best suited to immediately start working on a live-action adaptation. That if you're gonna suggest a new prequel show, these are officially Martin's top two picks. The author himself, his top two picks, are The Dance of the Dragons and The Tales of Duncan Egg. Which is, you know, surprising to us, just, he really confirmed in this podcast, you always said you didn't want to do that. The way I think it'll work out is because there's supposed to be 12 Duncan Egg prequel novellas, there's time skips between them, that they are very episodic. Even the three we have, which have gotten graphic novel adaptations even, so you can visualize a visual format, there's time skips between the different stories that I don't think you could do this, or should do this, as a TV series so much as an ongoing series of TV movie specials for HBO Max. Maybe even giving you know, uh, be fancy and give it a limited theatrical screening in one or two locations. They did that on Game of Thrones once or twice, and they had a big action episode. But and, and things are overlapping these days, what with same day release on HBO Max. But Duncan Egg would work better as high budgeted TV movies annually. Like one year we get a TV movie of the first one, The Hedge Knight. Then a year later we get The Sworn Sword, the next one, and so forth. And my guess is that maybe Martin thought, because they're episodic, and maybe if they're making them as a series of TV movies, they don't need to crank them out one every year. Maybe when they've reached the current ones, they can just go on break for like a, a couple of years, because he said he planned it out that they cover 50 years from when Duncan and Egg are teenagers to when they're old men, when uh, Egg is the king, and Dunk is Lord Commander of the King's Guard. This covers their whole lives. It covers their children. So I can see his relationship with the children. So I can see how maybe Martin thought we could just go on break for a while. That at a certain point, you would even need to, if you were making this within a decade, if there's 12 stories, you couldn't really, if you did 12 sequentially, one every year, annually, you would need to recast Duncan Egg by the middle of it, because they wouldn't age proportionately to the pace at which they were doing it, that they age 50 years in the time it, it would take to make 12 annual TV specials. So yeah, like after the third one, I think they could go on break for five years. And the, the fourth and fifth one are actually almost done, Martin said. He's just polishing them so he could give them his notes on the fourth and fifth one. So let's say they pretty much have almost half of it done. You could do that. And even then, but you could go on break, is what I'm saying. And even then, World of Ice and Fire came out in 2014, and even the authors of that said, we were surprised at how much info Martin was giving out in the chapters about Duncan Egg. In loose outline, this is what happens in the unpublished ones. The other Blackfire rebellions and this stuff with his children. And in, by the end, the final Duncan Egg novella is you start seeing characters from the Roberts Rebellion era that young Tywin would be like in the 11th or 12th one. That it mentions Tywin's father is such a weak ruler that Egg had to send in royal armies to the Westerlands multiple times to restore order. That right after they die, when they're old men, the final Blackfire Rebellion uh, breaks out, and people who were famous in Robert's Rebellion, like uh, Barristan Selmy or Brendan Tully, that they, they, they earned their spurs and became knighted in that rebellion. So you'll see, like, young Barristan Selmy, you would see, like, right at the end of Duncan Egg. Or that Egg's youngest son is in an arranged marriage to Olena Redwine, but they're not in love, so they, they end up breaking it off. So you'd see, like, younger versions of the oldest characters from the Game of Thrones era in there, like Tywin and Olena. But that's, that's at the very end. That's the final novellas in it. But my guess is Martin submitted it because they're episodic, and you could go on break for a couple of years while he's getting the next ones done. And on top of that, why are... Duncan Egg and Dance of the Dragons, the strongest prequel ideas. I think, you know, tell me in the comments, why are these the strongest ideas? I think it's a matter of they have the most source material. That some people might say, no, Long Night is the best idea for a prequel. Well, it doesn't have a shred of source material. You could fit it on a single page, combined with the fact that Martin didn't want to make it a prequel. 
and they just thought, oh, we'll just cobble something together. That if your basis of what makes a good prequel is how much source material does it have, that's what you're looking at. And some people could argue that, like, um, First Blackfire Rebellion or The Reign of Aegon IV before that would make a good prequel. I think they would too. Martin has said, I really think Aegon IV would be a good prequel leading to Blackfire. But that's in terms of the sweep of the story as described in a few pages there. Like, even Old Valyria, I think, is a great idea for a prequel. But it's it's this sweep of storytelling in an in-universe history book going, this is what Valyria is like on the scale of 5,000 years. Versus physical word count, print words on the page. The, the simple matter is that the most source material by weight like that is for Dance of the Dragons or Duncan Egg. But they're very different stories. I mean, Duncan Egg, it, Duncan Egg is the only prequel, if you haven't read these, Duncan Egg is the only prequel that's fully narrativized, written in the style of one of the main novels. Whereas Fire and Blood and the prequel novellas about the Targaryens in it, they're written in the style of an in-universe history book. So they're outlines that Martin said, I could make 20 novels out of Fire and Blood Part 1. That it's, it's an outline that he said, like, the chapter on the Faith Militant Uprising, he said, that's like three books worth of material. I just summarized it in one chapter. This is what the Faith Militant Uprising was like. So, like, Dance of the Dragons is even more expansive than that. That some things he said, I just summarized it in a chapter. It, there's some dialogue in it, but it's not fully narrativized to the point it's from characters' POVs and stuff. Even then, compared to all the other prequel eras covered in Fire and Blood and the World of Ice and Fire, by word count of the prequel outline novellas, Dance of the Dragon simply has the most material, objectively. 80,000 words. I mean, the stuff on the Targaryen Conquest is 10,000 words on the war itself, and I do think a Targaryen Conquest show would extend for decades into the Sons of the Dragon era as one combined show lasting five to seven years, so there's more, more written material on that. But 80,000 words for Dance of the Dragons, this is much more developed. That Martin said that he didn't originally intend them to be standalone novellas, and he wrote them in order as sidebars for the World of Ice and Fire. That's why Targaryen Conquest is relatively short. He said there is more to say about the Conquest era, it's just at the time I still had the pretense that I could fit it into the world book, and they did. And it's this 10,000 word huge chunk of the world book explaining what the Conquest was. Then he just got really into the creative juices were flowing and flowed out of him. He was in his element world building, and he made the prequel novella. It was supposed to, it started life as a chapter in the world book, and he went, yeah, I wrote an 80,000 word chapter for the world book. There's no way in hell we can fit that in. So then we had to wait for another four or five years until they could release it in full in Fire and Blood as, okay, these are the, the novellas I knocked out. Because just it's in his element, creating a master storyteller, doing what he loves, it flowed out of him, the Dance of the Dragons. I mean, they've mentioned the Dance of the Dragons since the first novel came out in 96, but that the specific characters that he developed for this that hadn't, hadn't originated before, that this is all great stuff. Oh, by the way, when I say 80,000 words, there was so, we were confused for a while that sometimes he'd say 60,000, sometimes he'd say 80,000. It's 80,000 words is including the chapter about King Viserys. That they said, well, the, the chapter about specifically the war is 60,000 words. But the, the prelude chapter explaining, well, this is the reign of Rhaenyra's father and how she developed her rivalry with Alicent. That's like another fifteen to 20,000. So altogether, it's 80,000. And it's not, oh, they're pulling other material. Mentally, I consider the Rogue Prince novella, which was retitled as Heirs of the Dragon in the book. I consider that extra 20,000 words or so to be part of the overall Dance of the Dragons era. You should start with young Rhaenyra and explain. The, the stuff we're going to see in House of the Dragon Season 1 is the, is where you get the extra 20,000 words. And you see, they are so the TV show House of the Dragon, by pulling from the broad, more broadly conceived Princess and the Queen novella plus the Rogue Prince, 
is a full 80,000 words of source material. And that is far and away the biggest amount of stuff. Targaryen Conquest, in terms of words on page that we have already in hand, can't compete with that. Or other ideas. I mean, Nymeria and the Roinar is a great idea for a prequel. And they had material on it, new material in, in the world of Ice and Fire, and they, they are considering making Nymeria as a spin-off, but it doesn't have nearly as much source material. But it's different, you know, it's again, it's that broad sweep, so he just describes very quickly this epic adventure they had across the Summer Sea, and I look forward to that. But in terms of source material, words on page, and it's this sprawling war across the entire continent of Westeros, there's two sides, both have dragons, Dance of the Dragons. It's kind of like if Game of Thrones just focused on the War of the Five Kings and wasn't distracted by two other huge subplots with Jon Snow at the Wall and Daenerys in the other continent. And there's dragons in it. So, Dance of the Dragons, but that, that's just stating the obvious. Dance of the Dragons has a lot of source material going for it. 80,000 words worth of outlines with some dialogue. Duncan Egg, you, there's graphic novel adaptations. You could turn Duncan Egg into a TV show very easily, and that's a selling point, that it's a more tight, boots-on-the-ground focused story of just these two characters, zoomed in. That it's not this sprawling thing, there's only one POV narrator, it's Dunk. It's just, the first one is just, he goes to a, a tournament, and there's a joust, and then a trial by combat. You don't need to make CGI zombies and castles and dragons for that. So a selling point was how cheap it was that their eyes were always bigger than their stomach, you know, that no matter how much money you gave them, Benioff and Weiss would spend money on, let's make a fully realized Winterfell. Let's have even more zombies, and it's just, can't make this one for one. That no matter how many stuntmen they had, they wanted more, to the point that they strained their logistics to the breaking point. Versus Dunkin' Egg, yeah, you can make a fully realized medieval joust set. It's expensive, but you wouldn't need CGI. You could just everything could be real when it's it's focused like that. Or, or the second one, the third one's also a tournament. The second one's just it's a handful of guys, and it's mostly a character study. So it, it's much more easy to make, and not just from the physical, also from the writing standpoint. It's not juggling POVs. It's pretty straightforward as a story. Now, what Ryan Condal had said before, bridging into this. In his first interviews, and I've made videos about this, Ryan Condal said, the, I had met Martin on other things, but back when they were discussing stuff, before they announced the five pitches thing in mid-2017, Ryan Condal said, I approached Martin and suggested, hey, can I make a Tales of Dunkin' Egg prequel? And Martin told me no, because politely, that I don't think they'd want to do that just yet. And at the time, Condal himself gave this speech explaining how it's so much more focused and, and, and just slice of life type of thing that it's not this sprawling epic war, but you know, jousts and duels. You can it's much more easy to make tales of Duncan Egg logistically and in keeping the writing focused. And that Martin politely told him no. This is a key supplement to that, you see. And I was a little confused at first. Here's what we what apparently happened. Martin first submitted these two ideas to HBO as these are the best prequel ideas at the moment. They have the most material. Dance of the Dragons and Tales of Dunkin' Egg. For some obscene reason, they rejected Dunkin' Egg out of hand, even though it's a really developed prequel idea. And, it, you know, it's already, it's got graphic novels even adapting it. It's, it's why wouldn't you want to make Tales of Dunkin' Egg? Maybe they didn't want to do it because it wasn't finished. I don't know. But even Martin said, just go on break for a couple of years. It's episodic. It would be TV movies. I think that was the thing. The HBO didn't want TV movies. They wanted a new flagship show to anchor their entire lineup. That, that's probably it. That Dunkin' Egg isn't a TV show so much as a series of specials. But I think what, ha what apparently happened is first Martin approached HBO. They rejected Dunkin' Egg. And then, like, a month or two later, Condal came to, to Martin and said, hey, can we do Dunkin' Egg? And I don't think he told Condal at the time, I already approached HBO and they rejected it. I, I don't think he told him that. I think he just told him, I don't think HBO would want that at the moment. 
the, the, or he said that I don't want to do that unfinished, that Martin played coy about it and didn't just bluntly tell Condal, I already submitted it, and they said no. But that's how he first met Condal, that Condal was pushing for a Tales of Dunkin' Egg treatment, so as Condal said last time, in many ways I was both the first and last writer trying to pitch stuff, that I was number zero and number six, that I came in and told Martin, can we do Dunkin' Egg? He politely told me no. They put out these other five pitches. None of those worked out, and then I came in. They got me back for House of the Dragon. So I think it's just that Martin wasn't clear to Condal about exactly what had happened, but this is big news that, and I would ask, this is something someone should ask Martin the next time he's giving an interview, politely point out, wow, in another interview you publicly said that you want to make a Tales of Dunkin' Egg prequel, you even pitched it to HBO. I thought you said you didn't want to do that until you were finished. Is it because it's episodic? If he ever turns on his blog comments again, this is something I try to politely ask, that are you now on board with, hey, yes, make live-action Dunkin' Egg? So I, I'm excited for this. This is good news, that yes, on a scale of the next 10 years, if and when they make Dunkin' Egg, it won't be over Martin's objections. He was actually really behind the idea. And that's the point of this video. Oh, really quickly, the other, we call it the War of the Five Pitches, the things that came out in mid-2017. We never explicitly found out what each of them was, but we managed to narrow it down. Just to quickly summarize, two got rejected pretty early. Three of them developed to the point that they had story Bibles by summer of 2019, that we were following this closely for two years, if you're keeping up with my reporting on it, everyone's reporting on it. Martin himself said there's still three ideas in contention by summer 2019. Then Long Night got cancelled that fall, and the next week they greenlit House of the Dragon, which is the Dance of the Dragons show. A month later, the linguist David J. Peterson, he admitted that from his work on it, he said... The three ideas that were developed reasonably well were Long Night, Dance of the Dragons, and the third one was actually Old Valyria, which from other leaks we've heard was called Empire of Ash, and the writer behind it still wants to pitch it again in, in a couple of years because there's new leadership at HBO, but right now he's busy working on this uh, biopic TV show for the LA Lakers, but like three years from now he might be hearing about the Old Valyria show again because it's this whole other prequel era on the other continent. That'll be interesting. That's a good idea. But Peterson said no one he worked with had any idea what the fourth and fifth pitches were. That they were never developed that much. They never advanced beyond the pitch phase. They were dropped pretty early. By process of elimination, because we know that the fourth one was Targaryen Conquest, because Martin said when Fire and Blood came out, two of the five pitches are based on this. And Fire and Blood really has two big prequel eras. The first half is the Targaryen Conquest and its aftermath. The second half is the Dance of the Dragons and its aftermath. There's this big 800-page collection of a series of prequel novellas. It's, it's an anthology covering about 150 years in the, in the first hardcover. So the, he said there's multiple prequel eras covered in this. So process of elimination, the fourth one was Targaryen Conquest. And I do want to see a Targaryen Conquest show someday. I just can see the argument that it overlaps too much with Dance of the Dragons, that it's too similar to Dance of the Dragons to do them both concurrently. But I can see that it's both fighting with dragons in Westeros itself, and Dance of the Dragons of the two is the stronger choice because it's got so much more source material in terms of word count. We have no idea what the fifth prequel pitch was. We, we still don't. And the theory is, I, by process of elimination, it might have been First Blackfire Rebellion, it might have been Young Tywin and the Rain Rebellion as like a one-shot, which is actually a good idea. You read the chapter on it and go, this would make a good one-season miniseries. But that's just speculation. We really don't know what it was. Some wondered if it was Dunkin' Egg, even though Martin said it's not. He, Martin said, of these five, none of them is Dunkin' Egg. Martin has also said that he will never allow a Robert's Rebellion prequel show as a standalone, because the whole point is that you find out about it in the main show. Like, the only way we're seeing Robert's Rebellion is if they make another A Song of Ice and Fire adaptation and show us events from it in flashback, because they're not afraid to use flashbacks because they're real writers. That if we ever see Robert's Rebellion, it'll be as flashbacks in another A Song of Ice and Fire show. Never is a standalone prequel. 
Martin has been pretty clear about that. And then we got the new set of prequels that were suggested in spring 2021 after Discovery bought uh, AT&T's HBO, so now it's all mixed up. Again, I made other videos about that, that there were a couple of animated projects they've suggested, such as a Yeet animated project, that'd be interesting, but in terms of mainstream live-action shows that they have pitched, they actually said that Duncan Egg is back in contention. They have repitched Tales of Duncan Egg. I haven't heard of a writer attached to it. So this isn't even something you'll see in 10 years. This might be something you see in five years. Them particularly because it's not a full series that would be competing with Dance of the Dragons. It would be like a once-a-year TV movie for adapting each Duncan Egg novella as a standalone. We might be hearing about that relatively soon, actually, if you think about it. But 2021, the new projects they announced were a Tales of Duncan Egg live-action pitch a young Corliss Velaryon show as he goes on voyages to lands beyond Westeros. That's more of a tie-in to House of the Dragon, and it's a great idea, because he's a character you will see on screen in House of the Dragon, and it's sort of a bridge to that there's other wor other parts of the world make a show about a famous seafarer, who he's a famous explorer who visits these other lands. So you want to make a project about Yeeti, make a, a brief spin-off showing a season where young Corliss visits Yee-T, then goes back to Westeros to tie it all together. So that's, it's a great narrative device for introducing these other lands. So there's a young Corliss show with um, Bruno Heller from HBO's Rome is attached to that. So that, it, that does have some steam behind it. It's not just an idea they're batting around. There's actually been some progress on the Nymeria prequel, though. They are actively considering another pitch for Nymeria and the 10,000 ships of the Roinar, starting with their war with Valyria. You'll see Valyria at full strength beating them, and then them escaping and go, uh, by boat and going on all these adventures like the Aeneid, you know, visiting all these places like Sothorios and the Summer Isles, and then ending up in Dorne and fighting there too. That the uh, screenwriter is attached to that, Amanda Siegel, and like uh, two months ago they did say this has advanced from the pitch phase to the write a pilot script phase. But you know, there's multiple stages. It's not greenlit to production. It's you make a pitch, the pitch does well, you write a pilot script. Then if the pilot script does well, they'll make a pilot episode. Then they might make a full series if the pilot does well. So you know, there's the multiple stages in there, but it's not just a pitch. They have ordered a pilot script for Nymeria and the 10,000 Ships of the Roinar. Young Corliss... Haven't heard of a pilot script yet, but Bruno Heller is attached. And it makes so much sense as a tie-in to House of the Dragon and as a bridge to other prequels they'd like to introduce relatively soon. Duncan Egg, and some people earlier this year, I mean, just like 10 months ago, were, but Martin said we shouldn't. This is them forcing it against Martin's will. No, Martin himself, this was one of the first two ideas he suggested was Tales of Duncan Egg. That's really surprising. So now I'm fully behind when are we going to get more news about that Duncan Egg pitch you told us back in spring was going to happen? That even, if even Martin is really behind it to the point this was one of it, officially Martin's top two picks for what are the best two ideas for a prequel era are The Dance of the Dragons, which we get as House of the Dragon, and Tales of Duncan Egg. So I can't wait.